Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Indeed, all praise is for Allah. We praise Him, seek His assistance, and seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil promptings of our souls and from our evil actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can misguide, and whomsoever Allah leaves to stray, none can guide aright. I testify that none have a right to be worshipped except Allah alone having no partner. And I testify that Muhammad, may Allah exalt his mention, is his slave and his messenger. Uh, dear beloved, beloved Muslims, uh, actually I want to, to talk to you in a, a more specific uh, way in relation to our religion. Uh, actually, I not ask or try to uh, say for you uh, how to pray, how to to do your uh, deeds as a Muslim. But actually, I want to uh, transfer to you my sensation as trying to be a proper believer. Uh, actually, what we are facing as Muslims in uh, defects in our manners and defects in good relations with each others and many troubles, uh, many troubles we are facing. Actually, the, there is no troubles, but we are thinking that we are in troubles. That is because our main intention is that world and not, not at all the hereafter. And also our little knowledge about our Lord, our beloved, beloved Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us more than we can try even to imagine. So I am trying to let my talks with all my students at that regard, which is knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to be near to your Lord. Uh, try to know him, to love him, to fear him. Not to fear his hellfire, but to fear that you are not near to your beloved Lord. Uh, this issue, uh, let's, let's me uh, focusing on uh, uh, searching about uh, subjects related to that matter, which is more knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the nice uh, notes or books I met was You Ask and the Quran Answer. I'll try to let you uh, be engaged with, with some of the verses mentioned, uh, but after addition of them, he is just writing verses, but not in between the verses. So I'll try as much as possible to every now and then. Uh, I'll try to uh, discuss with you not more than three verses per each lesson. Uh, just to know, just, just to realize how far we are from uh, our Lord as slaves, how far we are behaving as slaves, in spite we are really a slave. Each one is a slave and Prophet Muhammad, may Allah exalt his mention, the master of all human beings was honored in the Quran by calling him a slave. سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي أَسْرَى بِعَبِدِهِ لَيْلًا مِنَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَمِ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ الْأَقْصَى Allah in honored times 
for example, the uh, journey of Al Isra Al Mi'raj, he called him in Surah Al Isra uh, a slave. So he was honored by that title, which we are denying nowadays. And that's why behaving not properly, thinking ourselves something and we aren't. So I'll try just to talk about my Lord, my beloved Lord, whom I'm trying to fulfill minute, minute uh, 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 action by calling and telling about him because he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, bestowed upon me unbelievable, uncountable gifts, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, it's enough to know properly about him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to feel that I am honored by that. So the least is to tell others about my deep sensation of loving to be a slave to my Lord. In Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 255, the verse of Al-Kursi, Ayat Al-Kursi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about himself. This verse is considered the best verse in the whole uh, Quran, as Al-Fatiha is considered the best surah in the whole Quran. In that surah, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 255, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning his most beautiful names and deeds to let this verse be the best of all verses. He started saying, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum la ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la nawm lahu ma fi al-samawat wa ma fi al-ard man dha al-lazhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi-idhni ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum wa la yuhituna bi shay'in min ilmihi illa bima sha' wasi'a kursiyuhu al-samawat wa al-ard wa la ya'uduhu hifzuhuma Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about himself, telling that Allahu la ilaha illahu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, none is like him. He subhanahu wa ta'ala, none but him who deserved to be worshipped alone having no partner. And then he's telling us why. He's telling us why by saying that he subhanahu wa ta'ala al-hayyu al-qayyum. Let us analyze these two names only. Al-hayyu, he is the ever-living. So, any other than him will die. So, any other than him cannot be regarded as anything more than a slave to his Lord. Whatever his rank, Whatever his wealth, whatever his health, how powerful is he, how kind is he, how merciful is he, never ever to exceed than being a slave to the Allahu la ilaha illa huwa. Huwa. Allah, the Almighty, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the exalted, the only one to be worshipped because he is al-hayy, the all-living. Everybody, whatever his character is, whatever his quality is, whatever his health is, whatever his power is, whatever, whatever anything you can imagine, is going to die, is going to finish, is going to 
go to the grave as a dead body. So, this makes us be oriented that only he and none but him deserve to be worshipped. He is the ever living. And not only that, he is the one who sustains, the one who protects all. He protects all that exists. He protects that all exists. Any existing creature is protected, sustained by his creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is this means? The, the, the unbelievable race, everybody is joined with which is the race of seeking provision. If you are asking anybody, why are you sad? I have no money. If you are asking anybody, why you are not feeling well? I'm searching for a job. What are you doing in your space time or spare time? Searching for more jobs. Try to increase my income. Try tra trying to, lay to raise my uh, standard of living. Try trying to be more established in this world. This is the reality. It means that he or she really is not oriented by the sustainers. Who sustain, who sustains, and protects all that exists. Who is all the time guarding you against many things. Don't say that. What about those Muslims suffering a lot? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is well oriented, is well oriented by his slaves and you don't know anything about their end result in hereafter, how raised you hope to be like them in that world. And the proof for that is Surah Al-Buruj. In Surah Al-Buruj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the disbelievers were sitting happily interested in throwing the believers in hellfire in fire living living believers while living throwing them in hellfire in fire made only for them to be interested, seeing them be burned. And Allah is saying the only blame for this is that they are believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that their only fault is that they believe in Allah. You can ask and say why he didn't save them here then how to be how to be differentiated up how to be equalized up can this greatly suffering in that world with that severe torment by the disbelievers be equalized 
by another believer sitting relaxed eating when feeling uh, uh, some hot weather open the condition and relaxed eating best of the food with his family not suffering and when he want to go anywhere riding his car Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is oriented his creation is oriented by his slaves and he's oriented that this cannot be except that and that cannot be except that this is his destiny which we should believe in which we should trust because he is subhanahu wa ta'ala the all wise he's putting everything in its proper place in its proper time with its proper amount for its proper creation he knows that they are two brothers one can face poverty prevention deprivation the other cannot this is his wisdom in differentiating us in making us of different inside souls he is well oriented that x name is suffering and that x name is not suffering and this is one of the main trust that there is hereafter because it is the example of his justice his justice indicate indicates hell indicates hereafter discussion from his justice we should be asked what have you done with your wealth what have you done with your health what have you done with your marriage what have you done with kids what have you done with labor what ha- with, with with work what have you done with that and that and that and that gifts from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all the same time that suffering from many losses is going to be rewarded there without being asked and the aisha radiyallahu anha wa ardaha prophet muhammad wife told him is the asking he is going to ask us you did that you did that so be that so be that he said to her prophet muhammad may allah exalt his mansion ya aisha man nuqish al hisaba uzib a person standing in front of his lord asked about all his deeds minute before the major is considered a sort of a sort of trouble great trouble it is a great punishment to stand of your in front of your lord enumerating your faults and you are not going here and there ashamed from yourself so it is a kind of punishment to stand in front of your lord in hereafter and be asked again to continue at least uh, this uh, surah al- ayat al kursi i'll not be able to take more because not yet it's ex- finished uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al hayyu al qayyum and al qayyum is the all living the ever living and one who sustains and protects all his exists again neither slumber nor sleep overtakes him and this is from his being qayyum that he he isn't in need to sleep he isn't in need to rest he isn't in need of to take a nap he isn't being the strongest being the all the ever living uh, being the highest being the creator being the king being allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he isn't in need he isn't in need to take rest like his creation and also and also 
له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض. His kingdom is as wide as that. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. Actually, a person should be ashamed of himself to think to worship other than him, to think to ask other than him, to think to, to have reliance on other than him. He subhanahu wa ta'ala to him belongs whatever in the heavens, whatever in the earth. So where are you going? Whom are you to go? Where are you going? To whom are you seeking your help or advice or anything? Feel yourself properly. You need him. He isn't in need of you or to me or to anybody. He is the one needed. We need him. We need him all the time because all the time we are poor. All the time we need to be helped by him. Again, please try first to focus in what I'm saying and then I'll answer on any other question. But try first to focus what I'm saying. I'm trying to seek your real believing heart to know about your Lord. You will never even ask such questions.